In the previous video, we built our first web component. And now in this video, I'm gonna teach you about lit HTML. The reason why I want to teach you about lit HTML is because it's very easy to understand and it's such a small templating library. So let's take a look. Lit HTML is built on tag template literals. But before I explain lit HTML, let me explain to you template literals. So in JavaScript, you could create strings with a single quote or strings with double quotes, but these strings do not support interpolation. If you use the backtick character with the backticks here, you are able to do a regular string that actually spans multiple lines. And you could also support interpolation. So if I have a name, and then you would be able to say hello and then interpolate the name. I think most of you know this about template strings, but another feature in template literals is tagged template literals, which allows you to put a function name just before this template literal. It could be any function that you created. So this one will not work because I have not defined tag yet. So let's go ahead and define function tag which takes an array of strings. And then I'm gonna get all the other arguments into a values array. And then I'm simply gonna do a console log for strings and the values. Now, if I run the same tag template over here, tag hello name, we get an array of strings, which is hello with a space and then another empty string and then the values jud. Now let's take a look at a more of an HTML template example. So let's say I will create a function HTML and I will assign it to tag. And now I can do HTML. And then I could say I have a div with an ID navbar. And inside of it, I will have an H2. And then this H2 will have hello and then the name of the person. And then if I press enter, I have basically an array of two strings, everything right before the interpolation and everything right after the interpolation. And then I have an array of all the value of interpolation, but not the variable name. So I don't get name as a variable, but I get the value of name. So the value of what has been interpolated into this. And the way lit HTML works is by creating its own tagged template literal, and it just knows about your strings and it knows about your values, and it creates parts for these values so that it knows how to update them efficiently without having to re-render all of the HTML. So without further ado, let's go ahead and install lit HTML. It's just an npm install lit HTML. Now for the purpose of this demo, I need to have a custom webpack configuration for the named imports to work, or I could just install the Polymer CLI, which I'm gonna do. Okay, now that this is done, I can just run npx polymer serve, and that's gonna serve my application on port 8081. So let's go to 8081. And I still have the same thing over here. And now I'm ready to go back to my app and let's import lit HTML. So I'll import HTML from lit HTML. And I will also need the render function. So I'll go ahead and add it over here. And you see both HTML and render are just 3.6 kilobyte gzipped. And if you do broadly, I think it's gonna be less than three kilobyte. Now, the benefit of this is that I could just go and take everything from this template and remove it from the HTML and then go back to my app.javascript const template equals and just write the word HTML and then use the backticks to create a tag template literals and then paste your template over here. Now do note that syntax highlighting works because I already installed a VS Code extension called lit HTML. So I don't need this template anymore. I'm gonna remove it. This tagged template returns a template result that you have to pass into a render function. So this render function expects a template result. So I'll pass in the template, which is a template result of all of this. And then I will render all of this in the shadow root. And now if I go back to the page and reload, I do have an unexpected token in the imports. Yes, so that's because I forgot to make the script type module. This allows me to work with imports. Now let's go back and reload. And now I will have the same thing as before, but I'm not using the template. And it's not just about not using the template. You actually get a lot of additional features. So one of the features allows you to use a template result inside another template result. So let's say you want to refactor this into a variable. You could go here and say, this is going to be the navbar description. 
and now just go over here and just interpolate a normal variable and that's going to be navbar description and that's going to still work. Of course you could imagine that navbar description could have different values based on a certain condition or based on a certain API call. And you could also let's say read the theme. So let's go ahead and read the theme again. So const theme equals this.get attribute theme. And then you could say over here, you could write a certain ternary operator. So if the theme is equals equals to dark, and then I'm going to say, just going to write in dark mode. And then if not, I'm just going to say light mode. And now if I reload the page, you will see this is dark mode and this is light mode. If you had a variable, you could also loop through it. So let's say we had an array of menu items, accounts, settings, and logout. You could create a UL over here, and then you could take the menu items and then map through them. And then you have one item and then that's gonna return an LI of item. And let's reload. And now you'll have these three menu items. Now the best part about lit HTML, because of the tag template literals, if the theme changes, it only needs to update this part. It does not have to re-update all of this. And there's no virtual DOM in it. It just changes the part because it knows that this is what changed. So it's quite fast and quite efficient. Now, one more use case of lit HTML, which I'm not gonna expand a lot into right now because we do not have nested components. Let's say inside the app navbar, you had an app menu, and then you could set a Boolean attribute. So what if you wanna say dark as an attribute, but you only wanna set this dark attribute if the theme is dark. So then you would do question mark, and then dark equals, and then theme equals equals dark then it will only add the dark attribute if this returns true. If not, it will remove it. And then let's reload over here. If I take a look, so I don't really have an app menu element right now, but imagine you had one and then this is the dark attribute here because we have dark mode enabled. And if you take a look at the other one, you will not have the dark attribute. So this question mark allows you to have a Boolean attribute. And if you wanted to pass some properties, you could pass them with a dot. So dot menu items equals menu items, as simple as this. And then finally for events, use the at. So if you wanted to pass some functions or if you want to handle click events, you could say at click and then this dot handle click. But I'll not dive deep into these things right now. Maybe I'll cover them in a different video. I just wanted to show you the basics of lit HTML and show you that it's super close to the platform. So as you can see, learning lit HTML does not require a lot of time. And even though that's not all of the features that lit HTML does, I wanna show you just the basics. And if you spend a little bit more time, you could learn about the other ones. Now, in the next video, we're gonna simplify this even more by using lit element. So I'll see you next week.